The launch of Arima's Aircraft Maintenance Organization Department has been responsible for the creation of jobs and also for the advancing of aviation professionals. Here's a story you would like to know as Arima Airways impacts on the life of young professionals. My name is Jason Farley and I'm the maintenance supervisor of Arima Airways Aircraft Maintenance Department. Now, Jason, you saw um, we're here one year into the new department. And what are some of the accomplishments that we've been able to see over the year? Um, we were able to accomplish significant training within our department. We have uh, enhanced the skills of each uh, individual staff. And so we can safely say that we are even more competent and effective to carry out all maintenance activities on the aircraft. You know. Now I know that you have about two aircraft, or three that you were able to get assembled over the year. You want to tell us about that experience and what other that you Yes. Um, in 2016, we purchased a number of aircraft from a company in New Zealand. The aircraft were dismantled and we were tasked to assemble those aircraft. We did so successfully with our competent team. And so, yes, that was one of our uh, crowning achievements. Additionally, you would recall in June of last year, one of our aircraft suffered an accident, uh, an explosion, fuel explosion. And so we were also tasked to put that aircraft back together. And again, we were able to do so um, using our best skill and judgment. And so that too uh, was an accomplishment. One thing that's very interesting though with the entire operation is that a lot of the, the personnel that work here were trained in Diana. How insignificant is that for them to really work and put together an aircraft for probably for the first time and it's doing very well. It's taken um, uh, cargo and passenger to Kaichu or to many other locations in Diana. Yes. But I should also mention that we do uh, flights uh, to many Caribbean islands, for example Trinidad and St. Vincent. And um, yes, most of our staff uh, were trained at the Art Williams Caribbean Perinacle Engineering School. Um, that's a school based here in Ogle. Uh, a number of staff were also trained overseas, and um, we have benefited significantly from training. Training is very important. It's very important for us, uh, for our ability to carry out effectively our tasks. Now, if I can give you, um, you can be able to point out one thing for that one year of having the aircraft maintenance department put together. What is that one thing that would stand out to you? Because you were there from day one, putting it all together. Well, I think what's assembling this team, uh, we sought to have the best mechanics and engineers in the entire country. And we were able to do so uh, in a manner that, you know, we can really be proud of. Now, Delon, in 2015, we bought this aircraft from the now informed Golden Arrow Airways. This is our first Thailand aircraft that we bought into our fleet. And this aircraft has given us really good service. And we try very hard to ensure the maintenance is carried out at the uh, scheduled time. And so, yes, this is one of our success stories. I think you put it together very well. We have um, it's already branded and so on. So we talked about um, earlier um, in our conversation. Uh, we had we sat down with some of your um, guys in the party. We talked about the really impact that uh, this entire department has had on your life. I think you're going to tell us um, the impact of your career for those youngsters and how many you would have been to provide employment for. Yes, at the moment we have 25 staff. Those staff included the uh, engineers and the technicians and the supporting staff. And they all are part of this family. We see ourselves as family. We try to be in this uh, organization for one objective, and that is to ensure that the work that we carry out is safe, it's approved, it's safe and approved. What you see here, 
engineering team is carrying out a 100 hours maintenance inspection. This is a scheduled inspection, so after every 100 hours of flight, we carry out um, this inspection. Now let's talk about the category of staff that we put together the aircraft or to maintain an aircraft that you oversee. Yes, well, we do have engineers and technicians and supporting staff such as the technical records uh, personnel and the personnel from our technical stores. On the aircraft, there are different sections, and each section, there are team members who have uh, individual responsibilities. Here you have Rahul, he's working on the engine, and at the completion of his task, he will ensure that it is properly certified, inspected and certified. Also, we have guys from our avionics department. They ensure our instruments and our radios are functioning properly. And we have the guys who work on the fuselage. They ensure that the airframe and its associated systems are functioning satisfactorily. So where do we see the, the aircraft uh, department, maintenance department, probably the next uh, 20 years? Because we already have, we're celebrating one, yes. and we have 19 more to go, and of course it's going to have its longevity, but where, where do we see going? Well, one of the things I project is an increase in our fleet capacity, an increase in our capacity to offer uh, additional services such as landing gear overhaul, magneto overhaul, and also the certification of additional aircraft types. One of the things we're also working on is ensuring all of our technicians are licensed. Um, that's having the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority's license, engineering license. So we're trying to enhance and, and encourage um, our guys to be able to obtain their license. And one of the things that we're doing to ensure that happens is by conducting internal training. Can you do that or, or it's outsourced? It's basically done internally by our guys, our senior guys. Um, we command a wealth of experience. In fact, we command over 100 years of maintenance engineering experience, aircraft maintenance engineering experiences. And so we put all that together. We uh, come up with training programs and we uh, share that with our staff. We hear the technical stores. The technical stores comprises of two sections. There is a quarantine section where we stand in, and we have the bonded sections. So what do we do in the quarantine sections? In the quarantine sections, all of our incoming spares are processed here, and once that process is satisfactory, uh, completed, we transfer the spirits to the bonded section. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So once the spirits would have completed processing in the quarantine sections, they are transferred to the bonded stores or the bonded section of the stores. Um, here we further document those items. We have two systems. We have the good old-fashioned bin card system. And we also document those spares coming into the bonded stores on our computer. The spares are then stored on shelves that are numbered and labeled in accordance with the Air Transport Association of America standard, commonly referred to as ATA. I should mention that the temperature in the technical stores is controlled and the reason is simply to ensure um, somewhat prolonged storage.
Welcome to Technical Records Department. My name is Parvati Sikhasad and I'm the Technical Records Supervisor. So in these binders, we have the Cardex system where we use these to monitor the aircraft components. And we have we have e-checks that need to be called up on an inspection work box where we provide this information to the engineers on the ground floor. And also, the components are live components that have to be monitored so that we would know when the items need to be removed from the aircraft. Thank, Thank you, you for, for visiting Rimes Technical Records Department. I hope that you had a happy Easter. Well, the right way we did indeed. Here's our kind for Easter. It went up flew very, very well. And we hope that your kids and yourself enjoy the very, very good one. And of course, we'll be right back with the Rima Hour.